So I'll just open a couple models to show you some examples of this smoothing in action. Uh, if you've gone to my website and scrolled down a little bit, you'll see this character that I've named Sassafras Sam. And uh, let's look at his model right now. So here's a trick. If you have a Maya open and you have a Maya file, in Windows at least, you can just drag and drop it and it will automatically open up the file for you. And this is going to take just a little bit to do. All right. Looks like my computer's slowing down just a little bit. Okay, so you remember how in the uh, other video when I was talking about how the Rango characters, like some of their hair, was built in and those are not polygons? Uh, same thing here. There is a special rendering technique that I used, so you won't see any hair in this model. We'll just be looking at the geometry itself. Okay, so this model has been smoothed and actually brought into another modeling application called Mudbox for some detail work. But certain things, like his gun, were just modeled in Maya. Okay. So let's just try to isolate this. Okay, so the grouping here is not very good, but Okay. So you can see there's a lot of different shapes here. Let's just group this and rotate it around. And right now everything is sub D preview smoothed. So let's just turn that off. So I selected everything and did that with my hotkey. And you can see that this is what the low res polygon model actually looks like. So the important thing to keep in mind is that Anywhere where there's edges close together is going to create some kind of crease or pinch. And anywhere where there's edges spaced apart are going to create sort of a flowing or smooth type surface. So you can see that this piece, which is supposed to be very round, doesn't have any closely condensed edges. They're all pretty even, except when we look at this edge right here, which I wanted to have uh, not soft. Or it's a little soft, but it didn't, you know, I wanted it to be turning a corner here. So what I ended up doing is I ended up putting three edges right next to each other. It created that effect. Uh, same thing here, a little bit more complicated. But in this case, we've got these protrusions uh, going in, or these dips. And they need to be round going around in this direction. But from here to here, following the surface, they ne needed to have that facet. And this is the solution I ended up with. A lot of modeling is just kind of finding out exactly what polygons will create the shape that you want. And this is a little advanced for where we are now, but just to show you that this is the general approach that we're going to be taking. So the body of the gun, uh, a little bit more complicated, and uh, but essentially you can see those same principles in, in action here. So when I smooth it, there's kind of a complicated feature coming in this piece sort of starts out as nothing and turns into this ridge here okay and let me pause the video and just open up another good example all right so I'm kind of a Star Trek buff uh, here's something I modeled a while back uh, Captain Spock. And uh, the reason I brought this up is because I wanted to show you that this principle is something that's going to work even on organic characters like this. So you can already tell where those edges are going to be close together on this model. Right through here, right along the lip here, top of his lip, uh, on the nose area, and on the brow, and anywhere where you see wrinkles. And anywhere where it's uh, relatively smooth, you're going to expect to see edges that are not close together. 
So let's just take a look and see what he looks like. So here's his low res mesh, and uh, as you expected, it's sort of like that. So this is something we'll get into later, how to model the character's head. But it's just important to reiterate that this, this is how we model things in Maya with polygons. We use the rule of threes, and uh, we try not to add edges where we don't need them, because the more edges you add onto a model, the longer it's going to take to manipulate and render and do anything with, basically. And uh, we'll also talk about how these polygons are flowing, because that becomes important, too. When this character gets rigged and is ready to give a performance, it's going to be very important that these edges are kind of flowing in the same way that uh, a real human's uh, anatomy or the muscles of the face would flow. But for right now, I want to model a wine glass and show you these things uh, in action. And uh, this is something that you can do too. So let's go ahead and create a new scene. And uh, by the way, how I did that was I've, I've got all sorts of like custom marking menus and things like this that I pull up. But you can access all these tools through here. So I just did a file, new scene. It's going to ask you if you want to save or not. Uh, there's nothing really here that I want to save, so I'll just say don't save. And let's get started. So let's create first a polygon cylinder. And I'll zoom in on that. Now, this may be a good number of edges to begin a, a wine glass with, but I'm going to reduce it down for simplicity's sake and just turn it down to 8. So I went into the, uh, the primitives channels right here, click, and then subdivision axis, 8. All right. And I'm going to scale this down. This will be the bottom of the wine glass. And I'm going to use a new tool here that you haven't seen called an extrude. Uh, first, let's select these faces. So I went into the face selection mode. And I'm going to use the shift button to add to my selection. So this is important. Um, you can use shift to add things to them. You can also subtract by holding down shift. If I don't hold down shift and I just select around here, it's not going to add anything to any selection. It's just creating a new selection each time. So I don't want to do that. I want to select all these top faces here. And it's important to make sure you don't select anything by accident. So I'm just going to take a look around. Looks like we're OK. And I'm going to scale these faces in just a little bit, like that. And now I'm going to use an extrude. So what I'm going to do is go to Edit Mesh. And maybe I'll just tear this off so we can keep it open. And I'm going to go to Extrude Face, which I've had on a hotkey for so long that I can't find it. OK, it's right here. So Extrude. Uh, you can extrude edges and vertices and faces. So they've renamed it just to Extrude. I've got my uh, hotkey set to Alt-E. Uh, quite often you'll find if you've set a hotkey to something, Maya will tell you what that hotkey is once you've set it, in case you forget. So you won't see me use extrude very much more because I'll just be using my hotkey, but I will tell you when I do use it. So extrude, and it's going to change your manipulator to this funny looking thing. Um, so it looks like a translate and a scale and a rotate all at the same time. And that's kind of what it is. So you can grab this and you can drag it up. And you can see what it's done now is it's pulled these faces, but it's created a new row of faces in between where this used to be. So that's very handy. And you can scale it if you want. So what I've done is I've just selected the scale manipulator. I'm going to grab it in the middle. And you can scale this in now if you want. And by the way, all of these could also be set along here on the right. But I uh, usually don't do that. In fact, if I want to now, I can just hit the R button and change to normal scale. So it's just gone out of the extrude tool, and now we're just in a simple scaling of these faces mode. Okay, so if I want to make this look like a good wine glass, I've got to bring this in a little bit, like this. And now we can grow the stem of the wine glass. So I'm going to use extrude again. In this case, it's Alt-E. And I'm going to go to the translate tool right away, just by hitting the W button. 
and bring this up here. Okay, so this is a little too thick for my preference, but we'll change that after the fact. Right now I'm going to do extrude again, go to the scale tool, and bring these faces out like this. This will be the globe of the wine glass. So I'm going to extrude again, bring this up, and maybe one more time. Scale in a little bit, and then bring this up like this. Maybe this is the kind of wine glass I like. All right. So, pretty fast and simple way to create a wine glass. Uh, the stem is definitely too thick. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the edge component mode, draw a marquee selection around all these edges, and I'm going to scale it in. Um, now, if I just scale from the middle, it's going to scale in, but it's also going to scale up and down, which I don't want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Control and then grab this bottom one. And what that's going to do is it's going to lock this one off. And it's only going to scale on along these two. Which is exactly the result that I want to get. Okay. Maybe I'll bring this up a little bit. So I'm just going to grab this edge and then double click it. And translate this up a little bit like that. And I think this base should probably be a little bit wider. So I'm going to grab the whole thing. In this case, I'm grabbing the vertices. And I could scale it like this, but then you can see that I'm also scaling that base of the stem here, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and do something new now. I'm going to deselect these. Let's go into wireframe mode so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to use the control button, holding down control. I'm going to marquee over these. And now that's deselected those faces. Or sorry, vertices. Okay, I'll go back into shaded mode. I'll scale that up a bit. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. Now you can see that as I've been working, I've accumulated a big list of history. And you can see exactly what I did. Uh, poly tweak, that refers to when you move things around, like vertices and faces and stuff. And then here are these extrudes. And uh, it's not so bad right now, but if we kept going, this could end up being miles long. And then it would be incredibly slow to work with. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete the history. Lead all by type history. And you probably won't see me pull that menu up much longer because I'm going to start using my hotkey. And it's a hotkey I recommend you set as well because it's just common uh, practice in the workflow here to delete the history on your models as you work. Okay. So it, this is a pretty good general shape for a wine glass, but it's awfully boxy and polygon like. But what we should do now is try smoothing it. And uh, as you can see, it's sort of turned into like a 1960s sort of modern glass. There's also no hole in the top, but we'll get to that in a second. But this isn't exactly what I had in mind. So what I need to do now is start adding edges in here to hold down the places where I want there to be creases or lines. 